On today's show, we'll break down the brand new trailer for Morbius starring Jared Leto. We'll go through the new releases, including The Eternals and Spencer. Dan Layton sits down with Christian Stewart to talk about that film. And we'll tell you all about the event cinema and upcoming special screenings at your local Cineworld. Welcome to What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. I am Lou Cowan. And he's Ollie Davis. <laughs> right, should we talk about... Good intro, mate. Yeah, um, no should we talk about Morbius? Yes. Because we've got a brand new trailer for, uh, for Morbius, which we're going to watch in just a second. Uh, but it feels like it's been ages mm. since we saw anything from Morbius. Because I think, I might be wrong on this, the first trailer came out for this in like February 2019. Yeah, and then something happened. I can't remember what happened, but yeah, stuff got pushed back. I think the original timeline was for this to come out before Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Yes. So everything's skew with. Yeah, so we've got a brand new trailer for the movie. Uh, have you seen it yet? No. No, neither have I, so let's watch it right now. Here we go. Something's that looks been... like T-Rex food. It looks like. Damn it. Jared Leto looking very sickly. I am a doctor. That was all from the first trailer, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Some flashbacks. So this is a lifelong illness, it looks like. Yeah. Origin sort of, story. Sort of glass mm. from Unbreakable style. And the movie Glass. We, have to push the we don't talk about that. <laughs> Oof. So using blood and a lot of science, so it's that blend of magic and science. Bats. Oh wait, this is Batman. I've seen <laughs> no, this superhero. No, no, no. no, no, this is Sony, remember? As they're calling it a new Marvel Legends. Ah. That's a smart bit of marketing, because it, it's like an older, legendary style character. Oh, it's an old song being done in a creepy style. Oh. Crikey. Looks better though. Mm hmm But well, the trailer already? No, the, oh, the oh, Jared Leto's skin. <laughs> Look at oh, it. Look. Oh, it's yeah. ripped now. If if it, I've been trying to get abs forever, and if all it took was to become an a living undead vampire. living vampire, yeah, I'd, mm. I'd do that. <gasps> he's got powers and that. There's his hearing. Oh, yeah. Super hearing. Oh, so he's really a bat. Yeah. It's like definitely more. He's fly. He's full on flying there. I mean, he is a vampire. He yeah, a but vampire. he's not like bat. He's not a, a, is he a was just, He was just like yeah. Neo Matrixing. <laughs> there he is. Oh wow! Full on, yeah, full on shot of him. He's a great actor. Oh, yeah. Daily Bugle. Does that mean we get a J. Jonah Jameson? Oh, Spider Man, Doctor Who as well. There's and the there vulture. There's Michael Keaton, obviously Batman in another movie. <laughs> the vulture in Spider Man. Who hasn't played Batman? That's a cool fight mechanic if he's going to sort of like jump from yeah. person to person. Sony love their. Is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Superheroes. is. Well, that's because they've got a whole lot of villains to work with at the moment. Good ending a, gag there. Good, good gag. ending gag there. Which is interesting as well. So, not only then if we've got connections to Spider-Man MCU style with the Vulture, he name drops mm -hmm. Venom there. I'm going to just skip back a second as well because... You've seen if you spied something. I, well, I, I spied a man yeah. something. So he walks past Spider-Man there. But look, yeah. that <gasps> Spider-Man says murderer spray painted on the mural. Well, that's not what interests me. What interests oh. me is the Spider-Man design. That's not Tom Holland Spider-Man. Is it? No. Is but you that... know, he's always getting new suits. No, but it, look, look at the eyes. He's like my girlfriend <laughs> before a wedding. 
You know, just those eyes. That just is. Just pick one. Come on, come on, focus, focus okay, now. Okay, focus, okay. focus, yeah, yeah, focus, the, the, focus the, on the, the Spider-Man. The bigger eyes, the bit. But seriously, it's six dresses now. <laughs> the wedding's on Friday. The Spider-Man in question here. This that looks like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Do you, Do you not think that looks like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man suit? It's, because yes, it's, got, it's yeah. got the white lines on it and everything, yeah, like the yeah. silver lines that Raimi really enjoyed. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to bring up an image to it's like a comparison thing there. Uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man images. It's two guys googling Im- images of people uh, to put on screen. Action shot. To solve a superhero theory. Dun, dun, yeah, dun. like look at that, that there. Yeah. That Spider-Man suit uh-huh. looks like that one there. There's a bit more blue on the uh, on the mid the sides, isn't there? Perhaps, yeah. That might be You're right, about the only difference. Well, no, because there's blue there. You can see some, the blue on the there's sides. There's some white webbing. Yes. There's more white webbing on the design. So I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you not more <laughs> impressed that that is like, that's Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, not Tom Holland's Spider-Man, despite the fact that that is Vulture from Tom Holland's Spider-Man and Venom, who is not in Tom Holland's Spider-Man yet. And we know in Spider-Man Far From Home, it seems like there's multiverses. Yes. And we've seen Doc Ock, yeah, everything is coming together. Yes, very excited. Quantum Leap, compulsory <laughs> reference. Uh-huh. However... Maybe Tom Holland just got a new suit. That looks exactly the same as the (laughs) two. Yes! (laughs) No, that can't be by accident. This isn't, you know, Buzz Lightyear is actually a real (laughs) man who just went through a dimension and is now a toy. Yeah. It's not that level of theory. (laughs) But what did you make of the trailer? I, you know what? I love that Sony, you know, like, I feel like the last... 10 years has been 80s nostalgia. Let's go back to the 80s. And right now we're living through that with the 90s. Everything's got 90s aesthetics. Bring back the noughties, Sony. Venom, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, Morbius. These look like movies I would have watched as a teenage boy with Eminem on the soundtrack. I was going to say. New metal. That's it, yeah. If this film ends and it's just like a chunk of guitar goes like, chicka chicka chin 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 chicka chin chin, pish pish pish. That's how they're like everything directed by, like all that sort of stuff. That's what I'm after from this. Looking like The Punisher. Mm. And I felt like, you know, particularly that scene where Jared Leto is flying in the subway station. That looked like, it was such an early noughties post millennium bug aesthetic that you see in the matrix and the x-men films and yeah i I mean venom did extraordinarily well with that aesthetic i think it's it taps into the teenage boy in all of us so i'm i'm very excited i'm curious more than anything to be honest i'm just pleased that sony have finally got their sort of expanded universe that they've been trying to get for years and years and years the whole the amazing spider-man series with andrew garfield I say series, it was two films in the end. But that was designed to be like the start of, hey, we haven't got an MCU, but we have got Spider-Man who's got a bajillion baddies that everyone knows. We can build a whole universe around that instead. Now it's it's finally starting to come together for them. And I'm just sort of, I'm just thrilled that it's finally working out for them. They're not just making this new sort of, uh, yeah, fleshed out roster of movie, solo movie leading characters. But I want, let's go back to your point. Okay. They're getting to tie in the previous iterations. Yes. All their sort of, you know, ultimately botched attempts at it. But can I uh, present, can I present my own wacky theory for you here? So, <clears throat> get ready folks. Tom Holland said in an interview this week, Uh-oh. he's not sure whether he'll play Spider-Man again. So really? Spider-Man Far From Home could be, is it Far From Home? No, that was the second one. Oh, did I get it wrong? Yeah. What's the new one called again? No, no way. Coming far from home. No, no way, way home. home. Is it no way no home? Way home. Yeah, producer Rich is nodding at us. Come up with, you know, different titles would be, uh, different sounding titles would be helpful. Can you go back and put <laughs> no way home, me saying no way home over the first time I said yeah, can it? You, can you edit this to make us sound like we know what we're talking about? Thanks, producer Rich. So but keep this fit in <laughs> still. Surrounded by the biggest idiots in the galaxy. So Tom Holland has said, that he may not be playing it anymore after the third Spider-Man movie that's coming out. What if 
we're getting Tobey Maguire back <laughs> as Spider-Man on a full-time basis. And this is the backdoor pilot uh, to bring him in and we'll do Spider-Man 4. Yes. Let's go back to 2006. You just said that's what you wanted. I'm not. Oh, okay. That so, wasn't sarcasm. Sorry, it sounded like, it sounded like you were asking me like, yeah, great idea. Let's go back no, no, to... No, 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 I'm all for it. I just said too many weddings I'm going to right now. <laughs> I'm going through mortgage stuff. It was so much simpler in 2006. <laughs> I hadn't even gone to uni. I could just sit in my pants in in my bedroom with the curtains closed, yep. watching DVDs. Evanescence posters all over the wall. Yes, please. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, decent trailer that was. This film has gone from being one of my... I, I, I would say that it was a film I was excited to see to becoming one of the most anticipated films mm. for me this year. The Eternals is out this week, the latest entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's available in all sorts of formats, including Real D, 3D, 4DX, Super Screen, IMAX. You can see it on all sorts of massive ways to see a film. But all of the reviews that have come out about this have all gone with a line of like, no one is ready for how great this film is. Mm. Well, I think we saw the same thing with Shang-Chi, and we were both stunned how good that was at the start of Phase 4. Because, you know, you know, each new phase, I was like, oh, have they gone too much with a split of TV and movies now? How's that going to affect the main tempo releases? But Shang-Chi is, for me, like a top third MCU instalment. With this, it's they've got Chloe Zhao as the director. And while I wasn't really a fan of Nomadland, the, the way it looked is undeniably beautiful. So just like how you saw Dune in IMAX or in the biggest screen possible, yeah, I think Eternals as well. It's going to have those big landscape shots. I want to see, I want to see something in Screen X. I still haven't. I think these big, almost John Ford-style Western shots, but a lot more overcast and moody, it looks like. Uh, almost like a Turner painting. That's what I think Chloe Zhao does. Well, if you go and see this film in Real D, 3D or 4DX between the 5th and the 7th of November... Oh, Davis. We were talking about um, posters for Evanescence. Yeah. How do you fancy a poster for The Eternals? Yes! An exclusive poster. An exclusive poster. Well, then I'm more in. Oh, yes. I told the story with Dan Layton, but I haven't told you this before. When I went to go see The Dark Knight, I went on like day one to go and see it. And I got an exclusive poster for going on like day one, first showing of the movie. It was a 3D poster, like a 3D holographic poster That's thing. Cool. If you look at it from one side, you can see Batman. You look at it from another angle, you see the Joker. Oh, mwah, love an exclusive poster. I love an exclusive Pokemon card. Uh, but I don't think we'll get that with this. No? No. You, oh, wait, why not? Because Pokemon. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but if you aren't really into your superhero I got, an, movies, I got an exclusive Pokemon card when I saw Pokemon, the first movie. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was part of the... Yeah. Did you not get one for Detective Pikachu? No, no, oh, no. well, opportunity missed. <laughs> um, if you're not into your, your superhero stuff, you can always go check out The Card Counter, mm. starring Oscar Isaac. I saw a very funny tweet recently where someone's partner thought Oscar Isaac was the same person as Jason Manzoukas. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, I can't believe oh. that guy from The Good Place is that good in Dune. <laughs> that is brilliant. They, I want them to get together for a family yes. reunion. Oh, so do I. And, yeah, <gasps> New mission, good. cast them together. <laughs> Manzoukas is the wacky cousin. Yes. Isaacs is the unhinged but trying to be straight man. <gasps> that is a buddy comedy that writes itself. Doesn't it just? Yeah. Come on now, get on to that, Manzoukas. Um, but yeah, this is, um, it's from the writer, and you know, well, it was the writer of Taxi Driver. He's directed stuff within his own rights. He's kind of like a legendary name within Hollywood, Paul Schrader, and it's presented by Martin Scorsese. The trailer for it is very moody. It feels very like, you know, a 70s style film, but being made mm. now. This has got like a really specific audience that it is catering itself towards. And it is catering itself towards it perfectly. Yeah, and it's Oscar Isaac, who I feel, as much as I love him in Dune, he is a ultimately supporting player. You think of him in the Star Wars movies. He's he, he, not in it enough for me as Poe Dameron, but... Before he got cast in Star Wars, he had such an excellent run of leading character dramas. Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Um, what's the one where he is like, he builds up a oil business uh, or like a shipping business in New York? I don't know. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, and he's fantastic in pretty much every... I, 
uh, inside Llewellyn Davis as well, the Coen Brothers movie. So I'm really excited to see him here. He's just an incredibly intense performer. Speaking of intense performers, and someone I'm a massive fan of, Kristen Stewart is back on our big screens this week as Diana, mm. Princess of Wales, in the new movie Spencer. Which uh, I was speaking to Dan Layton about this when he was being substitute teacher uh, <laughs> while you know various members of our team were away. He really, really liked this mm. film. Like he had nothing but positive things to say about it. This is not my kind of movie, you know, royal drama from the 90s. However, there is something that captivates me about how this movie is made. It look, I don't know if it's, the, the trailers certainly suggest it's going to be in 4-3. It's that kind of grainy texture to the film, which makes it look like B-roll paparazzi shots from the 90s. Obviously, that's evoking certain things that happened in Diana's life. It's a... It's a Diana biopic, by the way, for like, I think it's over one weekend of her life in, mm -hmm. when she's visiting the royal family. And it's just like, yep, it's, it's the first film I've seen that looks like how I remember my 90s mm. childhood. That's interesting. So I, I, yeah, I really want to see it just for sort of nostalgic purposes. Is yeah. that the right word? Yeah, I think, yeah, I can sort of see what you're saying by that. And speaking of people saying things about certain topics... Here's Dan Layton speaking with Christian Stewart about Spencer. Pablo Lorraine is an incredible filmmaker. I, I love his movies. He called me with um, like silly confidence that I should play Princess Diana, which as a first notion was like ridiculous to me, <laughs> but it was like very contagious. I was like, um, I, I mean, I really like her. It's really hard not to like her. I didn't know very much about her before we made this movie, but I did know that I was drawn to this person and that it was a sort of... Um, kind of just a good time to fantasize about what it felt like in an interior way. And so um, as scary as it was and and as irresponsible as it was to say like, yes, I think I can definitely do this in your film. I had to give it a shot. I totally could have fallen on my face, but it was worth it was worth trying. If you start to really sit and analyze it and try to do an impression, if you did a perfect impression, it would be too much. It's almost like she's a character of herself at times in interviews. She's like this undulating, swanning, like blinking, talking. She talks so fast. Um, she's always reaching out as well. I feel like the, the trippiest thing about watching the interviews is that she's never, other than later in life when she decided to do, when she planned certain interviews, uh, she's always saying one thing, but meaning another and reaching out from behind a kind of curtain um, of, of, of a, of a place where she's not allowed to really express herself. Both The Card Counter and Spencer are in limited release this week, and Spencer gets a much bigger release next week, by the way, so you could, hey, get in there a bit early doors. But that's not all you can check out this week, because we've also got Last Night in Soho, Dune, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, Halloween Kills, The Boss Baby 2, This Time It's Personal, uh, sorry, the both. <laughs> The Boss Baby 2, Die Harder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Boss Baby 2, Family Business, Runs Gone Wrong, The Adams Family 2, and still, you do have no time to die. Go see that. So, what is your pick of the week? Oh, this is, tri this is tricky. Because it's like um, two different parts of my palette want to be satisfied. I know, yeah. I want to see The Eternals. And I also want to see Spencer really, really badly, actually. Um, and I, I, is it just from new releases this week? Hey, you can pick whatever you want. I know you very much enjoyed Dune. I'm going to go with Last Night in Soho. Oh, yeah? Yeah, just because I haven't my seen pick it of, yet. Yeah, my pick of last mm -hmm. week. Um, I mean, hey, got an unlimited card. You can go see all of them, really. Talk about that in just a second. Uh, I think for me, I'm going to be the basic one here. I'm picking the Eternal. Yeah. I'm so, so excited for this movie. I cannot wait to see it. I'm going to go see it on as big of a screen as I possibly can. Uh, I, I can't wait to take it all in. Guys, it's here. It's, it's finally, it's finally here. I, after being delayed for so long. Boss Baby 2 is like, you know, it's been out for a while though. Well, I know, but aside from Boss Baby 2, Ghostbusters Afterlife, it, it's, it's here. And you can pre-book your tickets for it. That means, <laughs> do you know what? That means it's really close now. It's coming. It's happening. I, so, okay, so we've been invited 
to a screening of the movie that was next week, next Thursday, in fact, when we'd be recording our thing. I was so, so excited. Uh, I've got permission from my wife that I'm off like my parenting duty so I can go and see it. We're seeing it on like Screen X as well, so it's like a 270 degree thing. <laughs> Cannot wait. I've got an email from them as well being like, it's no longer on Thursday, it's now on Monday. I almost cried because <laughs> it's, it's four days extra that I have to wait. And I was like, no, don't take this away from me. This has a real spine tingling trailer. Oh, I've, I've watched it a load of times because it's on front in the front of like every movie I've seen at the cinema recently. And it's the one that gets me more than any other. Just, you know, that clip on the, the YouTube uh, clip of the old Call Us oh. and then Dan Aykroyd's voice oh. at the end. We're closed. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And you can pre-book your tickets for this film right now. Click the link in the video description. I mean, you're probably going to see me. At, at, <laughs> all of the all screenings. of the screenings. I'm going to take it's a, in a road show. <laughs> I'm like Kevin Smith. I'm just going to tour the country and I'm just going to go see this film as many times as I possibly can. I'm so, so excited for this film. This is so busy. I've actually got to pick up my notes here so I can read this verbatim because, hey, do you like Harry Potter? Yes. I know someone in our room over there likes Harry Potter. Well, if you want to see the films again, Cineworld are doing a Harry Potter marathon. Sure, we've got the 20th anniversary screening of The Philosopher's Stone, but what about all the other films? Can you name them all? Okay. I think I, pos I probably can. I don't think it's that hard, is it? In order. Yeah, so there's The Philosopher's Stone, The Dingley Doodad, what was the second one called? Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire. I'm having to verify <laughs> with... Uh, he's getting increasingly like, yes! The, the Fire of... Mm. Uh, Order of the Phoenix. <gasps> Half Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows One and Two. He's got it. This is why I'm the Cinemania host, well done. undefeated champion. Yeah. I had to take over as the host because no one could beat me at it. <laughs> um, anyway, so you can go see all those movies throughout December. As I said, I've got to pick up my notes here so I can read this out to you. For the December, The Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets. 5th of December, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire. 11th of December, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince. 12th of December, Deathly Hallows, Part 1 and Part 2. That's awesome, because I, I really feel very little screen... That, that very, a very small amount of screen time in Harry Potter is devoted to Christmas. Because it's like <laughs> yeah. a, you know, it's, it's a school year. But I, they feel like Christmas movies they so do, much. Yeah. I guess because when they were released originally. So that... I did, I did a Harry Potter marathon about three years ago throughout Christmas, watching them all. Uh, and then we went to Harry Potter Land or whatever it's called. Nerd. So this is, yeah, that, that's a really nice way to spend a Christmas. But I know what you're thinking there. It's like, well, surely to get all of those cinema tickets must be... It's going to be costly. Oh, it's going to be costly, isn't it? I can feel... Just my, imagine the pizza. I can feel well. my wallet burning away. Ah. But thankfully, I don't have to worry about that because I've got an unlimited card and so do you. Yes, I do. But you mentioned pizza there. I did. <laughs> Still amazed by this. <laughs> Still floored by this offer. Taste card. We are giving away taste cards to new and existing unlimited card holders. That means you get money off a load of stuff, including, and this is the one that blows Ollie and mine's <laughs> tiny little mind, 50% off orders from pizza and Domino's. <laughs> yeah. Speechless. So with the, the person who signs off these videos, we like, you know, sent it across to her. She, was, she loved the reaction, the, the, the shoot reaction you had a last week. marketing dream. <laughs> you know, when you go to Cinema World and they play the things before the film starts, it's, it is just people sometimes going like this. You know, feel more at Cinema World and they're, they're doing the slow motion facial reactions. <laughs> I want them to take that moment. And blow it up on the big screen. Let's put an IMAX. Yeah, <laughs> big, big like, face. Well, really? 50% off Domino's? What? But slow-mo <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> I know you're sad that we can't talk about Cliff Richard, uh, the great 80 tour oh, anymore. No. But thankfully... I as well. But thankfully... <laughs> But thankfully, we've got more event cinema coming your way, including 
Anything Goes on the 28th of November, Christmas with Andre on the 4th of December, and the Met Opera Live 2021 to 2022 Eurodice on the 4th of December. And we've also got those unlimited screenings that we were talking about last week, including Pirate and King Richard. I've seen a lot of trailers for King Richard mm. now, the Will Smith movie about the uh, him, uh, the father who's, who raised um, Venus and Serena Williams. It's really good. There's an excellent line at the end of it where a guy's like, oh man, you got the next Michael Jordan. He's like, nah, man, I got two. Oh, good line, mate. Is it as good as Will Smith's line in the Gemini trailer, though, where he says, he made a person <laughs> out of another person? Which is an all-time great go-home line for a trailer. It really is. And speaking of going home, we're going to go home right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode of What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. Why don't you download the audio podcast of this? Last week's podcast, by the way, had an exclusive interview with Edgar Wright talking about Last Night in Soho, which was really, really, really cool. And it's got extra chat between Ollie and I. Just chat in the breeze, going through your comments on this YouTube video. Please do click the links in the video description down below as well to check out any of the movies that we've talked about in today's show. But now, I've been Luke Owen. I've been Ollie Davis. And that's what's on.